What's up for February? The moon. Hello and welcome. I'm Jane Houston Jones from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. During 2009, we'll be celebrating International Year of Astronomy by taking you on a tour of one of the month's best celestial objects. This month, it's the moon. Everyone can see the moon even in the daytime. You don't even need a telescope or binoculars to see the moon. When you gaze at the moon, you'll see the same views that enchanted and startled ancient astronomers centuries ago. During the full moon, you can see patterns in the dark and light geologic surface features. Some people see a rabbit on the moon, and others see a man on the moon. What do you see? Sky watchers have observed and pondered the moon for centuries. In the summer of 1609, English mathematician Thomas Harriot was the first to aim his simple telescope at the moon and sketch what he saw. His drawings show the lunar terminator, the line marking the division of day and night on the moon. They also show some of the dark features, including the Sea of Tranquility. Harriot went on to create lunar maps over the next few years. But Galileo's famous observations from later in 1609 were the first to be published and publicized in 1610. These first views and maps of the moon through telescopes revealed previously unknown jagged lunar surfaces. Fast forward to the 20th century and beyond. More than 70 spacecraft have visited the moon so far. Twelve men walked on the lunar surface, and six of these drove lunar rovers. Plans are underway for astronauts to return to the moon. NASA's unmanned Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, launching this year, will collect valuable information about the moon's environment that will help pave the way for those future missions. Besides the moon, be sure to look at brilliant Venus in the western sky at sunset, and look for Saturn in the eastern sky a few hours later this month. You can read more about the moon and our planetary neighborhood on NASA's International Year of Astronomy website astronomy2009.nasa.gov and you can learn all about NASA's missions at www.nasa.gov That's all for this month. I'm Jane Houston Jones. What's up for February? Jupiter's moons. Jupiter's largest moons were first seen 400 years ago in early 1610. Hello and welcome. I'm Jane Houston Jones at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. On the 7th of January, 1610, in Padua, Italy, Galileo looked up above the constellation Orion. He aimed his telescope at the well-known starry wanderer, the planet Jupiter, which was near Orion that night. What he saw through his telescope startled him and marked the beginning of modern astronomy. Jupiter was not just one object, as he wrote and drew in his journal. There are three stars in the heavens moving about Jupiter, as Venus and Mercury around the Sun, he wrote. Galileo's January 7th observation showed three stars. The one star to the west was Ganymede, and to the east there were two objects. One was the moon Callisto, and the other was a tight pairing of Io and Europa. Io and Europa appeared so close together they looked like one object in Galileo's modest telescopic view. On January 8th, he saw a different lineup altogether. There were three stars on one side of the planet. Io was the moon closest to the planet, followed by Europa and Ganymede. Two cloudy nights and two additional observations later, on January 13th, Galileo identified a fourth object orbiting Jupiter. The arrangement this night turned out to be Europa on the east and Ganymede, Io, and Callisto on the west. On January 15th, all four stars were seen on one side of the planet. Everyone who aims a modest telescope or even binoculars at Jupiter will see the same view that Galileo did. The views of tiny moons orbiting the king of the planets will surprise and delight all who look up. Jupiter is hard to see in the evening sky this month, but northern hemisphere observers may see Jupiter and Venus close together low on the southwestern horizon on Valentine's Day. 
Then it will be a few months wait until Jupiter becomes visible in the morning sky. By August, you can once again view Jupiter and the four Galilean moons after dinner or as soon as the sun sets and the stars come out. NASA's Galileo mission, which ended in 2003, changed the way we look at our solar system. It found evidence of subsurface salt water on Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, and intense volcanic activity on Io. NASA's Juno mission will launch in 2011 on a mission to study Jupiter. And the Europa-Jupiter system mission, a joint mission of the European Space Agency and NASA, is slated to launch in 2020. It will primarily study Jupiter's moons Europa and Ganymede and Jupiter's magnetosphere. You can learn all about NASA's missions at www.nasa.gov. That's all for this month. I'm Jane Houston-Jones.